Kingdom Minded Ministries is Pastor Jimmy K. Rogers with Evangelist Shirley Green. So glad to have you on today. It's my pleasure, Pastor Rogers. Amen, amen. Well, great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. Summer and winter, springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses. To your mercy and to your love. You've given pardon to all my sin and given peace to all my endurance. Thine own dear presence to cheer. strength for today and the bright hopes for my tomorrows blessings all of mine with ten thousand besides Great is thy faithfulness, hallelujah. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies. Provided great is thy faithfulness, O God, on to me. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, you're faithful. Great is thy faithfulness with everything that's going on every time I wake up in the morning new mercies I see hey hallelujah all I have needed oh your hand hath provided great thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness 
you're faithful. Thank you, oh God, for being faithful. Amen. Well, let's start off. Tell us where you're from. Well, I'm originally from Chicago, Illinois. my home. Amen. Amen. Well, tell us about your humble beginnings. Tell us about what the Lord had you do, even as a child. Well, growing up uh, in my home with my 10 siblings and my parents, my dad was a Baptist pastor on the west side of Chicago. Can you give us his name? Reverend Van B. Watts, wow. senior. And your mother? My mother, missionary Ruby Watts. My upbringing was so important that I didn't realize until my adult years that the uh, foundation that was laid by my parents helped me through many tests and trials in life. So I appreciate the upbringing and the teaching from my parents who loved me and loved all of their children the same. Uh, some people say that that's not possible, but uh, there was no difference in our home. So I thank God for that, and I thank God for them instilling in me uh, Christian values and how to live, how to treat others, how to love. So I'm just grateful for the foundation that I have from my home. Amen. They instilled within you biblical principles that have lasted the tenure of your life so far. Of course. And there was always, I mean, it was, it was never a chore for me because I've always loved the Bible. I've always loved uh, learning about the word of God. And my mother taught me hymns from an early age. And I had to not just learn one verse, but I had to learn all the verses. But most times she would say, you don't have to sing those verses, but you need to know the meaning of what you're singing. So you don't get the essence of it when you sing one verse and one course. So down through the years, I've made it a practice uh, to check lyrics and to make sure that I have them right. Because as my former pastor, Apostle Richard Hinton would say, that hymns are prayers. And that's the, the foundation from my mom and from my dad, just uh, traveling with him when I became of age, probably about 14 or 15. And I would go with him to sing before he ministered. So that that was something that I didn't think that I would need until later in life. And I learned how to conduct myself. I, you know, it was, you know, just carry yourself in a proper manner when you're in the presence of the men of God. So I thank God for that and, and how uh, life has taken me. Maybe we'll get into that a little bit later, but through the various ministries that I've had the opportunity to uh, minister with the leaders of congregations. You have um, a beautiful voice, uh, soprano out of this world. Uh, and I'm sure um, that you were blessed even at an early age. I know you said that you went with your dad um, and traveled with him in ministry. Um, but when it comes down to singing, when was the first time you sang 
And what was the song, if you can remember? Oh, my. I was five <laughs> years old. I'll wow, never forget it. Wow. And my sister, uh, Reverend Lucille, the late Reverend Lucille yes, Watson, yes, yes. Uh, Tina's mom. Yes. Tina <laughs> she, Watson Conley, right? Yes, That's of right. course. And <laughs> she taught me my first solo, and it was yeah. in the garden. And I come I, to the garden alone. Of course, yeah. while the dew is still on the roses. And I had to stand up in a chair in the kitchen while she instructed me as to how to move my hands and she taught me the movement. So it was, uh, that was my first selection that I learned in the garden. Wow, it is amazing. So you've been groomed ever since five years old. That's right, of course. And uh, I, I'll never forget, I guess, I probably was about eight years old and my dad every first Sunday this is why communion is is such a yes has a special place in my heart because I would have to <laughs> in the Baptist church as you know yes they did it like it was a ceremony so yes. you marched in front of the table the deacons were yes. were behind and you you know followed through so the song that I sang for communion was uh, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all this world go free, not knowing that that was going to have a great impact on my life as I moved through the different tests and trials and uh, not, everything wasn't a test and a trial. There were blessings and honor. So I thank God that uh, those, those hymns just really, really, really had a great impact on my life. Now, we, we, we hear you say that the song that you sang in the very beginning at five years old was a hymn, but what is your favorite hymn of all time? My favorite hymn of all times is, Oh, How I Love Jesus. Wow. That's one. And then I Need Thee follows that. Okay. Can yeah. you give us a little bit of that one, your favorite hymn? There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing, it's worth, it sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, how I love Jesus. Yes. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because he first loved me. Has yes. that song uh, allowed the love of God to carry you through your life, even up until this point? Yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, you graduated in uh, Chicago. Is that right? Of course. I graduated okay. from uh, Farragut High School. Okay. And I always tell people that Pat Sajak was my classmate and my Whoa. friend wow. uh, from Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. I don't know if we could mention that or not, but sure. <laughs> anyway, Pat Sajak was uh, graduated high school. Crazy. Along with, uh, well, Pastor Willie James Campbell. Okay. He was a year, maybe two years ahead of me. Wow. So we were all in the gospel choir together at Farragut High School. Wow. And I thank God there's a... Um, there are a couple pastors that came out of our class. Can so, you tell us the very inception of ministry concerning Evangelist Shirley Green? Uh, the very inception is when I would sit on my front porch and gather the neighbor's children and teach hymns and get my own little choir uh, on the steps of our home outside. And I, I, I think I knew three-part harmony then when wow. I was maybe about 12 or 13. Okay. But it was always a joy for me to just be able to teach uh, others of children that were younger than I was. Uh, so that's where it started. 
And then um, being at my dad's church, I didn't direct the choir, but I led many songs. And a favorite of his was uh, He Cares. And that, that not the He Cares that my niece sings, right, but right. it's Rosie Wallace, He yes. Cares. In a mansion made of stone, in a shanty all alone, God cares. Not knowing that those lyrics yeah. were going to have to carry me through. I uh, became minister of music for the Mount Vernon Baptist Church in Memphis, Tennessee, and that pastor is Dr. James L. Nettles. Threefold, um, what do you call it? I don't know. I was uh, the director of the daycare center, a few positions, uh, administrator. Yeah, a few positions that kind of correlated, but right. minister of music uh, was my first opportunity to display the teachings and the trainings that I had down through the years, and that was a joy. And then um, being a member of, let me back up a bit. Okay. I was the director of the choir for Holy Temple Church of God in Christ okay. under Bishop G. E. Patterson, who was yes. then the co-pastor for his father at Holy Temple Church of God in Christ. So Oh. 
So I directed the choir there. Okay. I also directed the choir at Monumental Baptist Church, where my brother-in-law pastored uh, in Memphis. Okay. So the directing of the choir led me to be minister of music at Mount Vernon Baptist Church in Memphis. How, how did you end up in Memphis, Tennessee? Um, my brother-in-law, Reverend Samuel B. Kiles, we all know yes. the late Reverend Samuel B. Kiles, who was uh, very instrumental in the civil rights era right. and movement, That's friends right. to Dr. King. He came to Chicago and he was pastoring there. And my then husband, Howard Kiles, mm -hmm was a musician, organist, and he needed us. So hey. we moved to Memphis, Tennessee to assist in the ministry there. My husband played the organ and I directed the choir. Amen. And we see even at the stoop of your home and you were teaching, the Lord had a plan for your life. He do you did. Believe, do you believe that? I believe it. I believe it. That, you know, every, every step that we take in life, if we're totally focused on God orchestrating the rest of our lives, mm -hmm. then we may not see it then, but as the song says, we'll understand it better by, by and by. Yes, yes. So we see you working with W.A. Patterson and G.E. Patterson. We see you working with the Kyles family. We see how many men of God have you worked with uh, in, in and over your lifetime, in the timeline of your life? Well, it's been quite a few. I, I start with um, Reverend Kyles. Well, my dad, of you course. You have to start with your dad first, my yes. My dad, <laughs> my dad first, yes. Right, and right. Reverend Kyles, and then we uh, moved on to Holy Temple with under the leadership of uh, then Elder yes. Gilbert Patterson, and then uh, he was God's young apostle. He had yes. many titles. Awesome but, man uh, of God. Oh, yes. And that's where my foundation in holiness comes from. Okay. Now, I was born again and saved in the Baptist church, and I lived my life. But that foundation in holiness came at Holy Temple Church of God in Christ wow. under Bishop G.E. Patterson. Wow. I received the gift of the Holy Ghost, and I was speaking in tongues as the Spirit of God gives, gives evidence. So yeah. that... I, I cherish those uh, times in my life. Following uh, Bishop Patterson is when I uh, started the, uh, my tenure at Mount Vernon Baptist Church. Okay. And I must say that Reverend Netters, my dad, <laughs> uh, gave Reverend Netters charge over me. And we have to mention our apostle, Richard Daniel Hinton. Yes, and the, the one and only. Uh, the one and only. Moving back from from Memphis to Chicago, yes. I united with uh, the Monument of Faith Evangelistic Church under Apostle Richard Daniel Hinton, yes. Yes. not knowing that I would uh, have dual roles at that uh, church as well as being bookkeeper uh, for the ministry. 
and uh, traveling with Apostle Hinton and the uh, Breakthrough Crusade team as his uh, soloist. And the teachings that I got there just just put strength and and whatever I needed in life at that time. It was so special. So I thank God that my our paths crossed in that manner. Sure, and then, sure. Yes. And reaching, reaching out beyond that, uh, we were able to come in contact and made a connection with Prophet Brian Carnes, who says you need a prophet in your life. Yes. You have a pastor, <laughs> but you need a prophet. Even though the pastor would be, uh, have the gift of prophecy. Sure. Uh, I, I, he's a younger, um, younger man of God, yes. but just full of the fire and Holy Ghost and yes. the word of God and uh, God, you can't take it away from him. If he okay. says it, it's going to come to pass in Amen. my life. Amen. I mean, Amen. Maybe others that may think a little bit differently, but I thank God for for Prophet Karn. Yes. And then with his connection, there's Pastor Benny Hinn, yes. whom I love dearly. And I thank God for the opportunity that I had to even minister with him the times that I did in New York City and in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. I'm still at Monument of Faith under uh, Pastor Mark Hinton, yes. but to have this loving congregation here at Schomburg Community Church, yes. uh, I said on my live video on Monday that oftentimes we pray and we say, God, take me to the nations, take me to the nations, yes. not knowing that the nation was right in my backyard. Wow. This is wow. a Nigerian congregation. Wow. It's multicultural. But the pastor, Pastors Wally and Pastor Faluke, okay. and the members just, just put their loving arms around me and they love me and they, they just really look out for me. And I thank God for them. I thank God for, you know, being able to branch out and, and just learn new things and new cultures. It's, it's a blessing. Yeah. And I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. I thank God. God, Hallelujah. every experience for every ministry, it's, it's been a blessing. And uh, this, I, I want to say a little bit about the ministry here. They, sure, sure. Yes, they reach out and um, they're feeding the hungry. Hallelujah. It's just so many things. They have a health care ministry, Trinity Charities, that really, really reaches out to the community. And I'm just grateful to be a part of this right. ministry. I cannot, uh, I can't be more grateful to my upbringing. And I, I say to children, if you just, just listen and obey, I, I wasn't a disobedient child. Okay. I mean, I, I can count the times that I probably had, uh, we don't say spanking, he's got a whipping. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my dad, uh, there are four girls and seven boys, but my father, he never chastised the girls. My mother did. Okay. And boy, could she. The two <laughs> or three times that I did <laughs> have to be corrected. But I thank God that uh, there was, it was not a strict upbringing, but a loving, caring, nurturing upbringing. And it brought me to where I am today. Amazing. You know, I, amazing. I, I learned how to respect authority. And that's something that we rarely find. Okay. Absolutely. Everybody wants to do their own thing and go their own way. But I thank God that I know how to honor and respect leadership and authority. Amen. Your poise, your class, your elegance. Um, there are a lot of women in ministry nowadays that can take a few tips from you. 
who was your example? Where do you learn or where did you learn um, your, your excellence when it comes down to proper protocol within the church? From my mom, okay. I say my mother was the epitome of a first lady. Right. And we don't like to use that term and we didn't use it then, but okay. the pastor's wife. Yes. And she assisted my father in ministry. She okay. didn't go ahead of him. Wow didn't uh, usurp authority over him. She was the president of the gospel choir and uh, any instructions that she gave, she was sure that it uh, coincided with what he was teaching at the okay. time. And uh, it's, it was from my mother. And I have to mention my, my mother-in-law at, at one time was uh, Mrs. Ludie Bishop. And I, cause I married a pastor's son. Okay. Uh, my first husband was a pastor's uh, preacher's kid as well. Okay. And uh, those two women of God instilled in me the values that I have now and uh, how just watching them, it wasn't anything that they sat down and, and gave me a class in. It's just, sure. just listening and watching and knowing how to conduct and carry yourself. Why do you think that uh, so many young ladies nowadays don't carry from what is seen uh, themselves in a way uh, that would seem respectable? Is it that they're not listening or they have no good mentors? What would be your suggestion? Well, there are mentors out there. You just have to seek them out. And, okay. and it's, it's not a matter of having a one-on-one, -on -one, but if you just watch, look, and listen, uh, the, the training is there. I mean, it's, it's just innate in, in some of the older women of God. I, I mentioned um, Dr. Bernice Williams, okay. and then I have to go back and mention uh, Bishop G. Patterson's sister who took the time with me to okay. show me how to set a communion table. Uh, uh, evangelist Mary Hawkins, who Hawkins, is the, yeah. the mother of the pastor now of That's Temple right. of Deliverance. Right. And she instructed me and showed me how to set communion tables, how to just prepare and just, all you have to do is watch and look. It is, it is and then amazing. you can compare what you're doing yeah. to what they're doing and it'll, it'll get you on the right path if you're yeah. willing to listen. Did but, you ever get corrected at, at any time? Did she say, no, that's not right. Let's do it this way. Well, not really, because not really. I, I watched and I, I, I replicated whatever she did. And it wasn't anything as she knew. Yes. I didn't. So okay. why would I want to interject uh, what I didn't know into that, that rich experience? So yeah. it's, it's just sitting back, listening, and learning, and knowing when to speak, when not to speak. And now that's where your prayer life comes in. <laughs> <laughs> you can have all the mentors and mentees and everything else in the world. Yes. But if you don't have a prayer life uh, that you can connect with God and just spend time with him and get your instructions uh, directly from heaven and then add on whatever else there is that others that have tried this path can give and enlighten your life with. So listening is very important when you're trying to find direction. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay. And not only listening from a natural standpoint, but listening to the Holy Spirit? Of course. Amen. Yes. How did you develop a relationship with God? You're, I know your father was a pastor. Your mom was a missionary. You had sisters that were in, mi in ministry. But when did you uh, develop a one-on-one -on -one intimate relationship with Christ Jesus? Uh. We get back to the test and trial part of life. Wow. Uh, the things that I had to go through, that I encountered, that I endured, okay. it uh, gave me a more, uh, not more, but a better appreciation mm -hmm. to develop that relationship with God. If I didn't have that relationship with God, then I don't think I would have made it. I wouldn't have made it through uh, every test and every trial that I've had to endure. There's a platform that you have now recently adopted that you've really been holding true to for many years, but 
tell us a little bit more about the platform that you now richly so share uh, with the world. Uh, domestic Violence Awareness. Yes. Yes. Uh, October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yes. And for those that are experiencing this at this time in life, and I say right now we have a pandemic inside of a pandemic. Yes. We're dealing with COVID. And then we have those women, men, children, and I say seniors that sure. are encountering uh, domestic violence in some way or another. And you can't, the children are not in school, so there's no way that they can report, you know, if, right. if someone sees something wrong, sure. then they say something. But if they're at home 24 seven, and things are going on, you know, they're, they're being abused, then they can't, it's not being reported. So, and even with the women that are going through domestic violence, that we get angry, things kind of get us bogged down, but the answer is prayer. And if you just step back and take time to realize what you're doing to hurt that other person, sure. then it, it, it'll stop. If you need help outside of yourself, there are organizations that are available to give you counseling. We don't want homes and marriages broken up, but we do not want physical violence to That's continue right. in right. the home in any shape, form, or fashion. Now, you have been um, uh, such an advocate over this platform uh, was there ever a time in your life that you encountered domestic violence? And if so, uh, when? Well, this in, in my marriage, uh, I encountered severe domestic abuse. Okay. And uh, being the trusting person that I am, if, if after the first time, you know, people will say, well, why did you go back and why do you continue? Because I made a covenant relationship yes, yes. with God before God and man mm -hmm. that this would be my partner for life. Mm -hmm. and, and not only that, it's because you love the person that you're married to. Absolutely. So you trust what they say. And if this happened once and you say that, it's not going to happen again, then I trust that it's not going to happen again. So it did happen again? Yeah, so we, we try it again, and then it happens again. Okay. So uh, you have to come to grips with yourself and, and the realization right. that um, you have to preserve your life. You have to take care of you. I had children at the time, and I had to look out for them. So my way of escape was to just end the marriage and take care of me and my children. So you get to that point. Yes, yes, you know, yes. Some, some, some women have to come to that point where this is not going to happen to me. And I thank God that I took the path that I did and I was able to concentrate on my children. And Apostle Hinton would say, well, why you you never married? You know, I just he said you. I put everything in my kids. Yes, yes, yes. I, yes, I yes. concentrated on them and making sure that they had the things that they needed, and I loved on them, and I. That's how we made it. And you and you created a safe environment for them to exist and to thrive in. Is okay. that right? Yes. Thank and you we, so much. Yes, absolutely. They have they have uh, become phenomenal in the areas of ministry that they're in.
children, um, and would you name them for us real quick, just to give a quick shout out? Okay, my, my oldest daughter is Lori Cleveland, and she's married to a pastor, Preacher. Al Cleveland. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and then my son, Joseph Kyles, who is an avid businessman there in Memphis, Tennessee. Yes. He's built uh, at least three senior homes, I think two in Florida. Yes. He built a senior's home in Memphis, Tennessee, Amen. and he's just about business. He's, he's the vice president of the Rainbow Push Coalition of Memphis, Tennessee. Amen. So he has uh, a very close connection with uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson and mm -hmm. traveling and doing things, uh, just humanitarian efforts uh, in Puerto Rico and different parts of the country. So I thank God for my only son, uh, my only biological son. I have to say that because uh, <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> is my son as well. That's right. I say Jimmy and he doesn't mind me saying Jimmy. <laughs> Not at all. Rogers. That's right. Yes. And I'm happy I, to be. <laughs> yes. He, I, in fact, uh, when I started my voice class, he did my first ever flyer that I could use for advertising my voice class. So I certainly appreciate you. Love you so much. And you, you've been dear to my heart. He's the only man that's ever spent the night at my home. <laughs> <laughs> tell it, tell it, because I was getting ready to say it. See this? <laughs> I think he, he may have been about 24 then, so he, he's, No, he's, no, don't tell all of that now. Don't tell all of that. <laughs> I thank God for you. I thank God that you're still in my life. And then I have mm -hmm. my other three daughters, Alvale, Al Ruby Renee, and Decora Kishé. And when they were younger, they hated for me to say their names together. But I said, it's a song. <laughs> oh, yeah. But that's, those are the daughters of myself and Reverend Al Green. It is amazing because each one of the girls are singers in their own right. I'm telling you, the anointing of God rested on you and Reverend Al Green. And we want to tell you that, uh, do you see a lot of both of you in your girls? I do. I see the business side in, uh, and the musical side in Ruby. Okay. And then uh, Cora has the... Um, Cora, awesome worshiper. Cora is an awesome worshiper, but she is a, a I can't I can't even think of an adjective. Her poetry okay. would just set you in another realm in life. Whatever she's going through through, all she has to do is sit down and get a pen and start writing. Yes. But she's so gifted. And then Alva is she held the group together when they were younger. She was the only one that always knew her part. Oh, right, right. Teaching them. So uh, Alva is a strong force and a beautiful mother to her children. And I thank God for each and every one of my, my children. Amazing, amazing. With your traveling and going various different places to sing in front of prominent pastors, did you see the ups and downs of ministry? I didn't, I didn't notice downs because that's not, I'm not a negative person. Okay. So uh, my main focus when I was traveling and going, I always prayed and I always fasted before the services because I wanted to be in tune with whatever uh, the pastor was going to say at that time. So I was so focused on um, giving God glory and not, and, and being flowing. Okay. You know, you, know, you find many singers sure. that don't flow. Yeah. But many times, Pastor Henson will get up and say, um, after I've, I'm done singing, he said, I didn't tell her what to sing, and she didn't know my message, but here we are. Mm -hmm. And the song would always correlate or correspond with whatever he was teaching most times, not every time. Right, right, right. But, but I know that that came through fasting and prayer and just wanting to be a flow with the service. And God honored that in me. Yes. Has the Lord been with you through your lifetime? Has the Lord been with me through my lifetime? Yes, ma'am. 
throughout my lifetime. Sometimes we ask questions as interviewers that we know the answer to, but we just got to, <laughs> <laughs> we got to just put it out there. I could not make it without Hallelujah. God. Without God, I could do nothing. Without him, I would, fail. I would fail. Without him, I'd be like a ship without a sail. God controlled my life and my times are in his hands. I'm learning him come what may so you see if I were in control of my life I know that I would have worked things out differently but my time or in God's hands. God controlled my life and my times there in his hands. Control of my life. I know that I would have worked things out differently, but my times, my times. led me to ask the pastor if I could teach the voice class and okay. his daughter Melody was my first student wow. and I only I started out with two and to fast forward um, the class grew to about 35 over the years and I've been doing this for uh, at least almost 30 years and various basically at Monument of Faith and then I had a class here at the Schomburg Church and I'm looking into possibly starting a Zoom class with COVID going on sure. and various ones have been asking and inquiring. So we're looking forward to starting the Zoom class uh, for vocal training. Amen. God has allowed this pandemic to be um, just an eye opener for many people, people that have never ever used the computer are now using the computer. Uh, but I wouldn't say your vocal lesson started 30 years ago. I believe the vocal lesson started on that stoop outside your house. What do you say? Well, <laughs> I think so. I think so. That was, that was my training, uh, the beginning. Yes. Isn't it amazing what God will put inside of us, even, you know, that we don't even know that God is birthing something wonderful on the inside of us. And I want to share this with you that your life has been so 
uh, amazing that you've encountered certain things that have come up against you, but yet you have championed your way through. You've become a warrior for many women uh, concerning domestic violence. But as a, as a psalmist within the church, your music has rung out and has blessed so many people. Tell us one of the most exciting times in ministry that you encountered with any of the pastors that you had to sing in front of. That's hard to do. Okay. That's that's really uh that's really hard. I like the hard <laughs> questions. <laughs> I, I I you like I I I will uh pinpoint this uh one in Jackson, Mississippi, um when Prophet Karn had a conference and okay. I wasn't my pastor Apostle Hinton would say, You may not be on the program, but you're on God's agenda. Mm. And I was not scheduled to sing anything. And I was sitting on the platform and Pastor Benny started singing the blood songs. And I was just singing in the background and Prophet Karn passed the microphone back to me. And I started singing and Pastor Benny Hinn abruptly turned around and said, where's that voice coming from? And uh, he called me down to sing and the, the auditorium was full. I don't know if it was uh, 6,000 or 10,000, how many ever people that were there. And just to sing um, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. And it opened up the door. And following that service, Pastor Benny was playing that song on various broadcasts, I guess for over six months. So that, uh, that was uh, really inspiring to me and it humbled me because I said, here I am. I didn't even come to do anything, mm -hmm. but the Lord had me there for that specified time. A monument, so of faith, monument of Faith Evangelistic Church. Tell us about your time there in Chicago with the mm -hmm. great My, Apostle Hinton. Oh, that's... Uh, that's my church home, and I thank God for the ministry. I thank God for Apostle Hinton. When I came, when I came to the church, I was actually in between. I, I like working, okay. although I was home with my children. But I wanted, I wanted a, a job. Okay. So my expertise was in banking. Right. So I had my resume, and I went up one Tuesday night, and I handed my resume to him. I said, Pastor would you pray over my resume so that I can find employment? Wow. And the next two days he called and he said, God has answered your prayer. Uh, my wife has been praying that this position be filled here at the church. So uh, would you consider coming on as bookkeeper? Wow. So that's how that transpired into okay. a four to five year uh, tenure there. And then, um, singing along with the choir and in the choir from that point apostle hinton um, asked me if i would be willing to go travel with the crusade team and that's that's how that started um, i asked apostle richard hinton to do an interview and there were others at the time that did not want me to get in the office with Apostle Richard Hinton. And Apostle Richard Hinton said, come on in young man. And he sat me down in his office and he interviewed with me. And I've been doing this a little while now because I love the testimony of the saints. I really have a heart after ministry and I really love God. And Apostle Richard Hinton sat down and did the interview with me and I will be forever grateful. Has he always been that? Was he always that way? kind and open to ministry and those that wanted to hear about God? Apostle Hinton was one of a kind, Absolutely. always kind and, and, and open to whatever. I remember even as I'm sitting here, I invited uh, Pastor Wally and Pastor Faluke to come with me to a service. Okay. And they did. And like you said, the security and everyone else will try and keep you away and which all is, that. Which is wonderful because we yes. want them to be protected, of course, absolutely. Of course, <laughs> but he looked over at me and he said, bring those, bring them to my office. And he, they went to the office and he prayed for them yes. and uh, blessed them. So 
I can, that's just one incident that I can recall, you know, even be, because I'm in this setting, it's like things are, are coming to me about this church and, and the connection. Right, right. And he told me, his words to me were, uh, you go and you help those people. Wow, <laughs> so I wow. said, I said, okay. So I didn't, it's nothing that I did outside of his approval and, and, and his blessing. Amen. So that's, that's how I'm here. And that's why I remain doing what I'm doing right now. It is amazing that you're still in ministry um, after encountering all that you have and then seeing the departure of great men and even women of God, you are still in ministry. You see yourself in the future. Just continuing to, to be of service wherever I can be. I, you know, I don't, I don't have an agenda of my own. It's like, God, whatever you assign to my hands to do is what I'd like to do and to continue doing. I don't, it's, it's not about me. Yes, yes. It's about him. That's right. That's yes. right. Well, I want to say thank you so very much for your time today. Would you do me a favor and pray for a woman of God who's in ministry that may be encountering domestic violence in this time? Someone kind of like yourself that may not want to show or tell everyone that they're encountering such an attack, but they're using prayer and even hymns and songs to sing their way through, pray their way through. Would you please pray for them and let them know that there's still hope? Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we yes, thank Lord. you and we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord, for this platform that we have to just reach out and touch someone that's in need, someone that may be living in fear, uh, some woman that may be trying to protect her children from abuse uh, and even themselves. We ask, oh God, that you shower your blessings down upon them, oh God. Lead and guide them and direct their path, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Give them to know that your word stands true. Give them to know that you will give peace that passes all understanding. Help them, oh God, to rely totally on you and to depend on you. And we ask, oh God, that you even we, we even pray for those abusers, oh God. And we ask, oh God, that you put love down in their hearts, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, we ask, oh God, that you give, give divine instruction, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, you may be going through it and you haven't said a word to anyone. But God sees and he knows. And he's there to protect you and to keep you and to keep your life. I'm a living witness that he will carry you through the toughest and the roughest of times. I thank God for my life. I thank God for keeping my mind. And if you keep your mind stayed on him through it all, he'll bring you through. Learn to trust in Jesus and learn to trust in God. Through it all, he will bring you out. And I come out victorious. I thank God for my children and their health. I thank God for keeping and sustaining each one of them. None, none of us are perfect, but we thank God that, God, you are the perfect God for the imperfect people. And we ask, oh God, that you protect, guide, cover everyone with your blood. In Jesus' name, we thank you for Pastor Jimmy Rogers and for what he's doing, oh God, to just continue ministry and uplifting and upholding those of us that are here that uh, have been on this journey for a long time. And he just reaches back and reaches out so that he can be encouragement to those of us that know the way, but we haven't been given the opportunity to share. I praise God and I give him all the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Such thank a you. precious saint of God. I thank God for you and I appreciate you. And I'll never forget the kindnesses that you have shown me in this thank lifetime. You. And I pray that your works will follow you wherever you go that the Lord would make easy and successful your way and that the blessings of God that make it rich and add in no sorrow will be multiplied to your life because of it. 
Amen. Thank Amen. God. But I'm on Facebook, uh, Shirley Green, Amen. and uh, Instagram. Uh, my my daughters know my it's uh, Redeemed plus seven, and then I'm on Twitter. I I do a little tweeting every now. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs>